Hello friend, it's me Pat Sloan here for my daily video and it is Block Wednesday. I hope you've had a nice cup of something warm with you today or if you're late, watching later in the day maybe it's something nice and cold. That's <laughs> um, so Block Wednesday is our has the theme for the day and what is that theme? It is cozy activities. So I want to hear about cozy activities, but let me show you the block for our uh, cozy thing. So along and every block has a theme and here I have to show you up close. Look at the center pie crust. Yes. My favorite thing about a pie is the crust. There is no reason to eat pie if it's not about the crust. <laughs> so I was so thrilled that this, uh, fabric line had pie crust in it that I could center there. I lo love this block. It is sort of a, um, a little modified churn dash. Uh, speaking of knowing quote blocks from talking about the encyclopedia of quote blocks, uh, churn dash would generally uh, have all the segments even. This one has two, the, the half square triangles are larger and then the, uh, this third unit that makes the plus sign is is thinner. So that's a, a different variation redrafted uh, by moi. <laughs> so here we go. And behind me, and we only have one more block. So let me just show you. I've got all of them up there. They're, of course, they're on top of the in season quilt. Um, so there, I'll move over some. So you can see I've got this, the red strips and I've got all the blocks sewn. The left side is all the way sewn. I have that Pete, that one all sewn and the red strip to it. So I can take this one now and put it on the bottom. And when I do that, I am able to sew this middle strip. So I'll be able to do what I'll be able to do. Let's see now as I'll be able to sew this unit so so the bottom one onto here so this unit to here and so that to here so then next week when we get the last one then i can get the border on and look at quilting it uh so yes because remember my goal which i i do not think i'm going to meet honestly i just don't but i still because i still have a couple of the quilts we did uh the daily ones like the rainbow and the stay at home i have not uh I have not gotten them quilted. I think there's three of them from earlier in the year. So before I broke my wrists and so they just didn't get back in to be quilted. And I'm not sure if I want to send them to the spa or just do a zigzag myself because they're not that big. Uh, <laughs> Cindy, you know, it's the end of the year and the long armors get very busy. Cindy and Dennis always fit me in, but um, you know, that's a lot to ask. So we'll see. They just may not get done until January, although I'd really like to get them done. So I'm like thinking, well, maybe I'll do some light quilting on them. Uh, <laughs> still thinking on that. So, so your block, there he is down there is, uh, the cozy activities, but okay. So I digress there. You, <laughs> how did that happen? all the way over into getting things quilted. So your topic of the day is to tell me what part of quilt making is the coziest for you. And then, you know, like, is it binding? I think a lot of people feel like it's at the end. They do hand binding. That feels cozy. Um, I like to, I don't necessarily, I don't do much hand binding, but, uh, I really like hand applique, hand embroidery. I like the cross stitch for that same reason. It's that hand work slowing down. Some of you might find what's really cozy in quilt making is cutting everything up and then having it all ready to just zoom it through the machine. Lots of people just love that rhythm that you get in. You can just zoom and you get the piles of stuff behind your machine. And then, you know, you do the next section. So, but I've also like to hear about other things that are cozy and maybe you don't want to write about it, but you can just think about it. Think about what other parts of your life are, are activities that are cozy because that's the hygge part. You want to, you know, is it cozy to take a walk? Is it cozy, um, to go, um, play badminton with, you know, is it, is it, you know, if you play badminton with, a, with your family in the summer, is that sort of the activity that has really good feelings? You know, what activities bring back really good feelings? Um, 
Um, my husband, Greg, he likes to play, Mr. Greg, he likes to play horseshoes. You know, that's one of the things that he finds really relaxing to do uh, and fun. Uh, so there's all kinds of activities. Could be you like to hike, um, it could be whatever. I want to hear. So tell me in the comments. All right, let's do some more jelly roll tactics. I now have three, count them three. It's only December 2nd, so I have three blocks. Da -da. And then the one I did in the beginning. So yes, I did not do another new one besides, I did the green one, okay, yesterday. So let's talk about some tactics for this because uh, there's a couple ways, other ways you can approach working on this uh, as a daily thing. First of all, let's just look down here because what is fascinating is, here we go, is that there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. There's ten pieces. So you could have everything cut for all 35 blocks. I think it's 35 blocks. Yeah, for all 35 blocks, you could have them all cut. And then on one day, you could just sew, for all 35, just sew these two units. And then another day, you could just sew this unit. So that, that by the end of, you know, maybe you won't do it 10 days in a row because by the time you're putting on the last segments, you know, it's gonna take you a little bit longer to press them and, you know, be sure that they're correct. But you might take 12, you know, you may take 20 days, like every other day you sew on a different round. That could be one approach to doing this, um, which I think would be kind of fun. I like the approach of, you know, possibly you, you look at your fabrics and you pick like how, what color, I'll show you the one in the back here, like what color order that you want to do them in so that you could do them in the order of the row and then sew the row so that the rows one, two, three, four, five, there was five. So in five days or five blocks, then you can sew that row and the next five, you can sew that row. To me, that's super satisfying uh, because I'm getting it done as I go along. Now I probably am going to do a couple of rows worth and then I'm gonna fiddle around with the layout to see if I wanna do this layout or if I wanna make it a little bit more structured and I can't, I don't wanna, I don't wanna do it digital, I'll just do it with the block. So I'll sew some and then I'll mess around with the layout a little bit and see. Of course, it's very easy to just follow the layout. Then you can just pick your colors and go, go, go. So if you were gonna pick your colors and go like that, then you would want to take your strips, take your strips and put them in order of how you're going to sew them and then do, you know, one a day or you have to do a couple a day if you want to finish because there's 35 blocks plus you want to baste it and quilt it and put the binding on. So that means, you know, a couple, a couple blocks a day until you are getting, you know, close to done. Uh, so that you leave yourself enough time to finish it up. Um, but put these all in order first, put them in color order, then you can just pick up a strip and go if you haven't cut them all in advance. Now, the first thing I am going to do is I am going to go ahead and cut all of the, the, the light blue stripe. This is all my Morrison Park fabric. Um, so I'm going to cut these all up for the, for the number of blocks that are needed. Number of blocks I have less, which will be 32. So I will need like 32 of this and 32 of this and then twice as many of that. So 64 of those to get the rest of the blocks. I'm going to get all of those cut so that they're ready. Uh, and then I can mess around every day with doing, you know, a couple until I get a little further into the month. So those are some other jelly roll tactics. <laughs> Do I have any more on there? Uh, yeah, through the color plan. So that, that would be it. Oh, I put my Christmas t-shirt on the uh, Christmas tree, Christmas lane. <laughs> Makes me feel festive. It's actually super uh, lightweight. It's really a nice weight. I'm going to go look and see what other ones they have. Uh, because I like it even though I much prefer a v-neck this one is really soft it's not and it's been washed uh, and um, I think I got a large so that's that's what I'm wearing okay I need a little advice here on cross stitch all right all right my friends uh, so oh before before I forget be sure that you go to Monday's website 
uh, Monday's article uh, that I wrote on my website to enter my um, goodie bag, to enter to, to uh, have a chance to win the goodie bag. And so it's a big bundle of stuff. It's really cute stuff and it'll be there. I'll pick a winner Friday night. Friday night. Okay, so I got this. Yes, look how cute. I got a new bag. I love bags. I love bags. I'm a bag lady. So I got a new one and I got a little pull tie on it that says, what is it, handcrafted? Handcrafted. Yeah. So I like to have that because <clears throat> the zippers are never have a big enough zipper for me. <clears throat> so come down here. In here, I've got, this is the one I want to start next which is this little guy. Now, the, the question I have is that he has worked on a um, 20, 25 count. No, he's worked on 36 count linen. Oh, he's worked on 36 count linen. Um, and I have some 25 count. So I have some 25 count, which I guess, you know, will make this a little bit bigger. It's only like three by three. He's very tiny, so I can make him bigger. But I also have a 14 count, which will make it quite a bit bigger. Um, you know, I've never worked on this smaller 25 count, which I read you have to do oh, two over. You know, two, two holes is one stitch. So I might just practice on that. The black is really cool. I like the black, but he's going to be too big then, I think, to fit into a hoop I have, you know, to... Um, to display it because I just think it's so cute displayed like that. So it's, it's like more like an ornament size. Um, but I have a little bit bigger hoop. Where is that hoop? I don't know where I put it. But um, so, well, in here I've got all of my, I've got a box of thread and then I also have all of the backings that I have right now, all of, that I've collected. So tell me your thoughts on this. Uh, will it be too big to do it on the 12, I mean on the 14, on the 14 count? I did a conversion thing and I think it would end up being about 7 inches by 7 inches if I did that. Um, from 3 to 7, no, 3 to 5, I forget. But I'll link you down, there's actually this neat conversion. Oh, three, it would, be a, it would be a 5 by 5 if I went from 25 count, which I didn't realize that the pattern actually said 36 count. That's pretty small. It's on linen. Uh, so this stuff here is, I don't know, it's a rayon cotton mix. So, but that looks really pretty too. So this is all, this part's all new for me. I mean, when you pick uh, quilting fabric, for the most part, you don't have to worry about the fiber or the, you know, the weave of it, much like yarn. Yarn's the same thing. Yarn has all these different weights and stuff. With quilting, you just buy quilting fabric. There's other things we have to figure out, like what are we gonna make, you know, and what are we gonna put with it? Uh, so there's a whole different set of stuff, but the, the fabric's all the same, you know, weight and feel, pretty much. Okay, there we go. <laughs> You're gonna go make your block Oh, I gotta get it and show it to you again. You gotta make, make your block for today. It's so cute. Ta-da! And then, if you have thoughts on my snowman cross stitch, let me know. <laughs> Links are down below. I love you. Mwah. See you online. <laughs>